The Avengers. That's what we call ourselves. Sort of like a team. Earth's mightiest heroes type thing. Avengers, time to work for a living. That's my secret. I'm always angry. I am on the side of life. You get hurt, hurt them back. You get killed, walk it off. I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger Initiative. I'm your host, Andrew, and I'm here to talk to you about the Avengers. Welcome to episode 55 of Some Assembly Required, your weekly adventure into the annals of Earth's mightiest heroes, the Avengers. This week, we are taking a look at Avengers number 51 in the clutches of the Collector. This week's issue is written by Roy Thomas, pencils by John Buscema, inks by George Tuska, letters by Sam Rosen, and it comes to us in April of 1968. Before I get started, I do have a couple of quick corrections from last week's issue. First off, the villain for last week's issue, I believe I correctly pronounced two episodes ago as Typhon. Typhoon, as I have made myself aware, is spelled with two O's, T-Y-P-H-O-O-N. Our villain is T-Y-P-H-O-N, singular O. So as I pronounce that incorrectly, please forgive me. Secondly, I noticed as I was going back through and doing the edits for the episode that there were several times times I referred to Typhon's weapon as a hammer when it is in fact described as a battle axe. If you remember my discussion from, was that the last issue or the issue before, I described his weapon as not really looking like a battle axe and I thought it looked more like a hammer, kind of like Stormbreaker from the Simonson run on Thor and Beta Ray Bill, and that's where my brain kind of went in the midst of conversation. So please forgive me again for misspeaking. With that in mind, let's go ahead and get into this week's issue. Starting with our cover, this is a very well done cover. I don't necessarily think it's particularly emblematic of what is inside the issue, what, what the actual content is. Goliath has this really great kind of evil looking appearance. It's the body language, it's the grin, and his antenna give him a little bit of a horned appearance. But as we'll see in the issue, Goliath is not our villain. So once again, we are falling into the historical trap of comic book covers not necessarily describing what's inside the issue. However, I really like the look of it. Thor and Iron Man both look really good. Hawkeye looks pretty good, and you've got Wasp making herself far more visible than than normal. Normal. I frequently when Wasp is that size on the cover, you don't have a really good way of finding her. You just kind of have to hope you notice her. But this way with the movement swoosh, if you will, it's a lot easier to find her. And she looks just fine. Now, if you notice on the cover, Goliath is covered in the old school blue and gold. And here in our opening splash page, Goliath is colored in the more recent red and blue with some gold highlights. And there is actually a bullpen note at the bottom of the page apologizing for incorrectly coloring Goliath on the cover. And while I'm not a huge fan of editor's notes in general, I at least like the tone of this one because I've always kind of been of the opinion that if you screw something up, if you make a mistake, own your mistake, you know, admit to it. And here is Marvel Comics freely admitting that they goofed. So 40 something years later, but good on you. So we open this issue with Goliath undergoing an experiment, presumably of his own design, aimed at at restoring his powers fully. Lately, Goliath has been unable to grow to his full size. He's been stuck at either normal human size or he's been able to shrink down to ant size, but he hasn't been able to push himself up to the, the 25 foot Goliath size. So here we find Goliath, Hawkeye, and Wasp, our remaining Avengers, attempting to help Goliath regain full control of his powers. And things aren't going well. As we enter the story, the experiment is starting to go awry and Goliath is yelling at Hawkeye to secure the equipment and the switch is stuck and Hawkeye is unable to secure it. Hawkeye, fearing for his teammate's safety, runs in to try and help Goliath and instead gets shocked and shot across the room. So Wasp, thinking very quickly, flies into the device and just starts disabling cables, just starts pulling things out. And eventually, she is able to secure the device and free Goliath. And it's funny because Goliath actually thanks Hawkeye for his efforts. And Hawkeye actually turns and says, no, I... I really didn't do anything. It was it was really all Wasp. So there's a couple things going on with this sequence that, that I really like. One, 
We have a new wasp costume, which I think is better than a couple of the ones we've seen lately. It's kind of a red bodysuit with a gold swimsuit kind of bodysuit over top of it. So it's not as revealing as the one we saw a few issues ago. It's still a little bit on the generic side. The gold portion has... It almost looks like a like an Aquaman kind of scale texture to it, and I kind of like that. I've got a, I've got a thing for texture, so I like when you can you can see and you can kind of mentally picture how it would feel. But overall, I think it's a, a fine costume. Now the experiment itself, I think, is really telling that Goliath is at a point right now where he is willing to do anything to get his powers back. He's getting desperate because that experiment certainly looked like it was causing him considerable amounts of pain, like a lot. So the fact that he was willing to put himself through this really tells me that he wants to continue his life as a superhero. He wants to get control of his powers and that he's getting kind of desperate. He really is running out of options. The other thing that I really like about it is that it shows an increasing closeness and relationship between Hawkeye and Goliath. If you remember when Goliath and Wasp came back on the book, Hawkeye and Goliath got into it at least once an issue, if not more than that. Now we see Hawkeye rushing into to try and pull Goliath out of this experiment with no concern for his own safety, with no concern for his own health. And he gets shot across a room for it. That tells me that these two have grown a lot closer. Now, obviously, there's still some tension there, but certainly the camaraderie has overcome the majority of that, and they are really bonding as teammates. The last thing I had, though, is I realized that I'm kind of curious as to why Wasp has not been affected in a similar manner as Goliath. So if you remember, Wasp's powers are based in the same science in pin particles, just like Goliath's. Now, part of it may have to do with the fact that she's not stressing her powers the same way, right? Goliath changes sizes a lot, and he goes from really big to really small very quickly. He's also had his powers longer than, than Wasp has had hers. So both of those factors may account for some of this, but Goliath has been having problems with his powers for quite a while now, and Wasp has shown no problem. So it, it makes me wonder, if the writing at the time just didn't think about it and they really just wanted to focus on Goliath or if this is something we should expect to see coming in the not too distant future. So we'll see. Now meanwhile, somewhere currently unknown, we find the Collector whom we last saw in Avengers 28. And the Collector is in and amongst his collection, and he has once again decided that he wants to collect the Avengers. So as we find the Collector, he is tuning in a screen of some kind in order to monitor the Avengers. And this takes place a little bit later than the opening of the book. It may be later that afternoon, it may be a couple days later, it's a little unclear there. But we find Wasp getting ready to enjoy the Avengers A-shaped swimming pool. And as she is taking some time to enjoy it, the other Avengers come to let her know that there is a message from Captain America that they all need to hear. So Wasp, who is on the high dive, jumps into the pool and is making her way out when she notices that there is a comb randomly sitting on the side of the pool. It's not hers, and as she goes to pick it up, she realizes that the comb is, as she calls it, electrified, but in some way she is unable to let go of the comb, and the comb starts to pull her up through the air. So thinking quickly, Goliath and Hawkeye grab onto Wasp, and the trio are pulled up above the New York skyline into the Collector's waiting ship. So again, a couple things about this sequence. One, man, the Collector's a creeper. Like, super creepy. Sitting here spying on Wasp in the pool. Also, Wasp is the only one in a bathing suit. Like, the other Avengers are seem to be hanging around the pool, but Goliath and Hawkeye are in their full costumes. They're not even in civilian clothing. They're in costume. It's more than a little weird. Lastly, this is the first allusion we get to the fact that the Collector is at all from outer space. As will be further explained much later in continuity, the Collector is known as one of the elders of the universe. He's a being that is effectively immortal, and he, along with the other elders, are outside of Galactus, the oldest living creatures in the galaxy. Now, it doesn't explicitly state here that the Collector himself is actually from outer space, but the Collector mentions that from beyond the farthest stars I have gathered them, referring to his collection. 
so he's been out in space collecting different creatures and items to uh, effectively rebuild his collection because he had to abandon a lot of it at the end of Avengers 28, where he used a time travel device of some kind to escape from the Avengers at the end. So presumably, this collector that we see here has basically skipped the last, oh, 20 or so issues, 23 issues of Avengers, and is basically gone from issue 28 right here to issue 51, or somewhere in that range. So as the Avengers are pulled into the Collector's ship, they are captured by a green plant-like kind of creature that tangles them up and holds them in place. And the Avengers are trying to figure out precisely who has done this to them, because obviously this was some kind of trap. The comb was obviously placed there intentionally with the purpose of dragging the Avengers up here. Now, again, presumably it was only intended to capture Wasp, but it's managed to get all three of them at the same time. So as the Avengers are struggling against this creature, they look through the domed glass enclosure around them to find that the individuals who have captured them are the aforementioned Collector and their former teammate Thor. It appears that Thor is serving the Collector. So from here, the Collector decides to release the Avengers and therefore goes and gives the creature a somewhat brief but powerful electric shock, causing it to let go of the Avengers. Now, I really like the idea of this, this creature, but I think it would have been even kind of more cool and weird and interesting if the whole ship were some kind of living creature. I just think that, that would have been so fitting for the Collector. He found this, this creature that's actually a ship. I'm a big fan of Farscape, and I really kind of like the idea of that living ship. That's actually one of the things I think appealed to me most about the show. So I would have loved to have seen that same idea here in the Avengers. I also kind of wish that the ship itself, if we're going to go with a mechanical ship, looked a little bit more Kirby-esque. It's not bad, but it's a little a little too Buck Rogers, maybe, too retro science fiction, even for the 1960s, that I'm really kind of interested in. It works for the story, but I think it could have been done better. Now that the Avengers have been released, we get a little bit of a fight or an argument between Thor and the Collector. And it becomes very clear that Thor is not doing things of his own accord. Not really. He doesn't want to be doing these things, but somehow the Collector is forcing him to. So we get some very typical Thor grandiose boasting kind of speech and then when Thor threatens the Collector with violence Thor is unable to wield Mjolnir against him he said for some reason he's unable to raise his, his hammer at the Collector and as we find out as Thor was flying above New York after an adventure the Collector spotted him helped bring him aboard and then proceeds to effectively roofie Thor he gives Thor a significantly stronger version of the obedience potion that we saw in issue number 28. And in fact, knowing that Thor is an Asgardian, the Collector is actually used Asgardian herbs in order to strengthen the potion such that it will actually affect Thor. So Thor is under the Collector's control because of this potion. Now as he's telling this story, the Avengers are all sealed up in this, these little glass tubes and we get to see little bits and pieces of the Collector's collection. And I love how weird and kind of crazy and mildly grotesque some of the stuff in the Collector's ship is. It's almost like an intergalactic version of Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum. He's got little shrunken heads. He's got big statues. He's got different creatures. He's got this weird snake lizard looking thing that he's kind of petting and holding kind of like a cat. It, it reminds me a little bit of the villain Blofeld from some of the early James Bond films where he's holding the, the white cat. It's the same idea, but it's this like lizard snake creature. So once the Collector has finished telling the Avengers how he got Thor under his sway, we see the Collector decide to start experimenting on Goliath because he doesn't want a flawed Avenger in his collection. Right? He wants a perfect collection. The Collector here, he's a perfectionist. 
completionist. He's a completionist. He needs to have the whole set. It needs to be in mint condition. So since his Goliath is not in mint condition, he's going to do something to, to improve its quality. And in a very 1930s, 1940s Frankenstein-esque sequence, Thor causes a lightning storm that provides the power for this experiment to attempt to bring Goliath's powers back to full working order. So it's a it's a very cool cultural touchstone here that, that that they're tapping into, and I really like it. Even Thor's body motion, the way he he swings his hammer up, is reminiscent of the flipping of the giant switches. It's just it's very very well done. I think it hits all of the the proper points in order to not mock or duplicate the Frankenstein scenes, but it gives the proper feel and pays respectful homage, I think. The experiment, however, doesn't really work, and in order to keep from killing Goliath, the collector goes ahead and stops the experiment and decides that he's going to spend some time trying to find some other Avengers because, again, He's a completionist. He has to have the full set. So he goes back to his screen to go find the Avengers. And what we get is basically a three-panel, full-page ad for new Marvel comic books. Now, that's not what it comes across as, but it's effectively what it is. So the three Avengers that the Collector looks in on are Captain America, Hulk, and Iron Man. Each of these three heroes has just started their own self-titled book. Uh, this is the first first issues of Captain America, Incredible Hulk, and Iron Man. I say first, it's actually like issue 100 of Captain America because they picked up the old numbering from the 1940s. It's issue 102, I believe, for Incredible Hulk because, again, they figured out about where Incredible Hulk would be based on where they left off, you know, a couple of years prior. And then Iron Man is actually at issue number one. Now, oddly enough, and this struck me as, as really rather odd, all three of these stories are, in fact, the closing chapter of other stories that were being continued from each hero's previous book. Typically, when you think of a number one issue, especially in the last couple of years, they're starting some kind of new story arc. But here, they are literally, this is, in all three cases, the final chapter of a two to three issue story arc. And I found it very odd that they had chosen to do this. Now, I will say that I think part of the reason is to kind of force readers to transition, right? Hey, look, you've read two issues. If you want to read issue number three, you got to go by the new book. But it just seems like a very odd way to start a character solo title, especially Iron Man that's listed as a number one. If you're unaware of the previous stories, you know, number one, you think, oh, this is a great place to start. Whereas Captain America 100, Hulk 102, you go, oh, well, okay, well, where's issue 99? Where's issue 101? And then you realize it was in a different title. It's not an instinctive, yeah, this has got to be a, it's a number one issue. It's got to be a new starting point. Now, since Captain America is off on a different continent and Hulk is in Asgard, the collector decides to send Thor after Iron Man because Iron Man has just finished fighting against AIM and the Magia in New York. York. So Iron Man is nearby. So as Iron Man is flying home, he is intercepted by Thor. And because of the Collector's control over him, Thor opens up by attacking. There's no dialogue, there's no threats, there's no warning. He just comes in and nails Iron Man with Mjolnir. And it's interesting to watch because Thor is not necessarily trying to warn Iron Man, but Thor's commentary is very much not threatening. So Thor isn't straight up brainwashed. He just doesn't have the ability to not listen to the Collector. He has to obey. So his thoughts are his own, but his actions aren't necessarily. As the two heroes begin to fight, they end up inside of a gym. And I like this for a couple of reasons. One, it's just a great fight and a great location. It actually reminds me a lot of the fight between Iron Man and War Machine in Iron Man 2. There, there's a point in there when they start hitting each other with workout equipment and it's kind of the same feel here i actually have the dj music from that scene running in my head as i read this which is kind of fun but it also shows how much more powerful thor is than iron man iron man really gives it his all and although he gets some good hits in on thor and outsmarts thor a little bit thor is just so much stronger than iron man there really is no contest there's also a panel in here towards the end of the fight where thor gets iron man by the head and that's one of those things that I really like in a, in a comic book fight it's not really a brutal 
assault, but when that tends to happen to a character, they are just straight up getting dominated. They are so lacking in control in this fight that the other person is able to get to their head and just do whatever. Also, usually it's getting pushed through a wall, and I think that motion of just pushing someone through the wall by their head almost always looks good in comics. Now, back on the Collector's ship, we find that Wasp has managed to get herself free, and she explains to Goliath that she was able to do this because that snake lizard cat looking thing the collector was petting that actually turned out to be some kind of alien insect and she was able to control it much like she does other insects and convince it to let her free and i think that is absolutely amazing wasp uses her powers in a great way and she discovers something about the collector's collection that he doesn't know and i think that's even better that this character this hero has this ability this knowledge above the collector about his own stuff right because the, the collector prides himself on his collection and on knowing so much about it it's a great way to bring him down a notch and to beat him not just physically but mentally as well so with wasp free she goes and frees goliath and hawkeye and they go after the collector but the collector is kind of ready and he releases a giant robot so as the giant robot chases the avengers around the room and is firing some kind of laser beam or something at them hawkeye kind of runs around the room and uses the robot's fire to damage and destroy the collector's equipment kind of like whirlwind did a few issues back in goliath's lab and unfortunately for the collector the robot inadvertently destroys the device which the collector is using to control the robot so now at this point the robot is acting entirely on its own accord without any control and on one hand that's good because now the collector can't direct what it's doing, but at the same time, there's now a rampaging robot nearby. It's not really something the Avengers want to deal with. And so as they are kind of, you know, for lack of a better term, freaking out a little bit, especially Hawkeye's face, it's a, it's a great face in the bottom of this panel, Goliath realizes that he is beginning to grow, either from the Collector's experiment or from Goliath's own experiment earlier in the issue, or a combination of both, or maybe just the fact that they are in Extremis. Goliath has managed to regain control over his powers, and now he is a physical match for this robot. And kind of like Hercules did a couple of issues ago, Goliath punches this robot so hard it basically explodes. Unfortunately, this causes a fair amount of damage to the ship, so the Avengers need to get out. And they're making their way to do so when Wasp is momentarily grabbed by a giant that is on the Collector's ship. So the giant robot, okay, fine, I'll deal with that. It's a little cliche, but the giant robot and then an actual giant on top of that, it's a bit much. Though thankfully the Avengers manage to drop this giant in two panels and the story moves on. At which point we see Thor and Iron Man back on the ground and apparently for some reason Thor has overcome the obedience potion or it's worn off something like that it's really unclear what happened but Thor grabs Iron Man because he's concerned that he's permanently injured Iron Man and Thor flies up to the ship to go try and rescue the other Avengers Thor finds the other Avengers having escaped but are somewhat trapped on the ship and Thor along with all the Avengers manage to escape just before the collector's ship explodes the Avengers return home and the issue concludes with the team receiving their message finally from Captain America, informing them that he is sending someone to take his place on the team, and that someone is Black Panther, whom Cap has been working with for the last couple of issues in his own title. So next issue, we will find ourselves joined by a new Avenger. Now, I will freely admit that I'm a little disappointed that this is how they decided to end the issue. I, I think it lessens the impact of Black Panther joining the team next issue. That could have been a really cool opening surprise instead they kind of pre-gamed it a little bit and so we know it's coming it does build a little bit of anticipation oh i can't wait to see what what black panther is going to do in avengers next issue but i think the better impact is you open it up and go oh man black panther sweet i, I think that's a much better surprise a much better much more impactful also has captain america been waiting on hold this whole time because just before they all got 
pulled up by the collector, Captain America was waiting to give them a message. And then we're at the end of this issue, which is presumably at least several hours later, and Captain America finally gives them the message. So has he just been waiting? Was this a recorded message? I don't know, but I really hope Cap wasn't just sitting around. Doesn't really seem like his style anyways. So that's our issue. Overall, with a couple of minor exceptions, the art in this issue is just so, so, so good. I really, really liked it. The collector's collection is just the right amount of weird and kind of oddball, like I said, kind of Ripley's, believe it or not. And the fight sequences, the action are really top notch. They're just extremely well done. Remember, you can find us at AvengersAssembly.com, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and you can find this podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. If you'd like to be a part of the conversation, send your questions and comments to Andrew at AvengersAssembly.com. Next week, we are taking a look at Avengers number 52, Death Calls for the Arch Heroes. All right, hey. All right, good job, guys. Uh, let's just not come in tomorrow. Let's just take a day. Have you ever tried shawarma? There's a shawarma joint about two blocks from here. I don't know what it is, but I want to try it.